What's an undercounter sink, you might say? Well, see, here's the, here's the top edge of the countertop. Now, lots of sinks are mounted over the top edge, and it's got a finished rim that fits around there. If your sink's like that, obviously you won't need to recalk it the way that I'm going to show how to do this one. Now, this particular sink fits underneath this granite top edge, and it's bolted and mounted from the underneath side. Then they went in and caulked all the way around this. So that's what I'm talking about when I refer to an under-counter sink. Now you might have something like this, an under-counter sink like this in your bathroom and not your kitchen. Well, it's going to be the same type of technique that I'm going to show you. So maybe you need to watch this after all. I really don't have any missing caulking under there, but look at how dirty it is. Ugh. That's mold buildup and just scum and who knows what. So if anything, I need to clean that at least before I recalk that. Now I'm going to go ahead and recalk that and everything like that, but what I want to first do is clean that a little bit because it if you just try to put caulking around this edge just think about it you put caulking around there it's not really going to stick very well to all that grime under there and the mildew if you got any mildew there or mold it's not your caulking is not going to stick very well to that and maybe in a couple months or six months or so it might start peeling up in certain places because it's not bonded tight. So what I want to do is I want to clean around underneath this edge all the way around. You know, I figure if I'm going to do the job, I might as well do it right. And I want you to do the same. That goes for any type of project that you do. Kaboom. Here's something you might want to try. I've got some tile X here. Disinfects instant mildew remover. Now this is pretty harsh. Uh, it's not necessarily biodegradable or anything like that. If you want something a little bit uh, more user environmental friendly, I would say, concentrated simple green, all purpose cleaner, non-toxic and biodegradable. I could probably drink that stuff. Hey, you don't have anything like that. You could just use your regular Clorox. You know, you got some Clorox around. If that's all you got, you can use that. Strict, straight bleach. Put that in just a little cup and take a little old toothbrush and put it on there. Okay, so we're going to try that. I think I'm going to try a little bit of Simple Green first in one area. I'm going to use some Tile X in another area. And I didn't have a little spray bottle, so I just got one here. Got it from Ace. Good old friendly Ace Hardware. And I just put a little bit in there. And on this, uh, I'll just put a little bit in a, in a little plastic cup or something and uh, apply it on like that. So anything like that. What you want to do is you want to get that grime out of there, that mildew, that slime. You know, and any one of these products will do. You got something else kind of like one of these? Try that too. Just about ready to install our caulking. The $100,000 question, what type of caulking to use, Joe? You got to get something that says tub and tile or kitchen and bath. I mean, there's a couple different ones, but it's going to be, see this says kitchen and bath sealant, high gloss, tub and tile, kitchen and bath sealant. This is poly seam seal ultra. And you don't have to get this one. Like I said, you can get there's, there's two or three brands, but you want to get something for wet areas. The kitchen sink is a wet area. Your bathroom sink's a wet area. Your toilet is a wet area. Your shower is a wet area. So that's the type of caulking you want to use in those areas. You don't want to use painter's caulk or anything like that. You'll be sorry if you do. The key to this whole thing, you want a couple paper towels out. Then I keep my sponge wet. I just rinsed out and I want that wet, okay? 
I use a sponge for my. Now, I'm going to take my caulking in there. And I'm just going to put it in there. And when I do it, here's what I do. I put it back and forth like this. Then when you know that it's filled all the way, then you can move on. You don't just do one bead and call it good. See, this gives you more control. Back and forth, back and forth. And that fills it up. Okay? Then you're using the tip to kind of flatten down it. Then you keep moving along. Okay? I'll just move it back and forth here. And I can see that it's filling up as it goes. I just press a little bit more before I go further. You can do this. It'll look like a professional when you get, when you get done, even if you've hardly ever done this before. You want to fill it all the way up, okay? Now you don't want to do the whole sink. That's probably plenty in one go. Make sure you press that. You don't want that coming out the tip. Put that right like that. Now, I can take my finger, and I want my finger just a hair wet, okay? I wipe it on my sponge, get the sponge a little bit wetter. I just wipe that on there, get, keep a wet finger. And I can take that and go. When I feel it getting on my finger too much, I'm going to wipe off the excess, and wipe off a little bit off of there, get my finger wet again. Go some more. Take that. I could wipe that here on the side, you know, like that. And your finger will feel whether or not it's high or low. You want to kind of hold your finger the very same angle the whole way. Then you got the same amount of caulking built up along that edge. Okay? You'll be able to fill if you need more. If you need more, just add a little more. Ooh, that's looking nice. Just add a little more. Do you think it needs it? Wipe on there. And you'll be able to tell. Wipe that off of there. That's why I like to try to hold my finger at the very same angle. I don't want to put it sideways or this way. If I've got it flat like that, I want to try to keep it like that all the way around. And I can backhand it and go that way. Or do it with my other finger flat. Now if you feel any excess on the porcelain, now you want to just take your finger. Don't go down as far. Just kind of wipe off the excess. Like that. I don't really have much. I'm saying if you do, you can do that. And then you can go back over it once, once over again like that. Okay. Then once you have it on your sponge, a little bit on your sponge, you can rinse that off. Just be careful. You know, you don't want to get your water up high into your work area. Wipe off the excess on the paper towel if you want, then you don't have to rinse this off as much. Okay? Easy greasy. One more thing before I show you the end product. The reason why I only want you to go about this far at a time, I want you to get used to putting this on. I don't want you to rush through it and think, okay, I've got all of this done. Now I have to wipe the whole thing off, clean this, clean this, clean this. You do too far. And if you don't watch it, the part that you haven't gotten to yet could start skinning up. You don't want it to skin up if you're not done with it. Then you can't, you can't clean it off properly. And then it starts getting all over. Then you got a big mess on your hands. You know, just do a little bit at a time and you'll be fine. Here's the end product here. That looks nice. Nicely caulked all the way around. Here's another angle. Didn't want you to think I was skimping on you. But doesn't that look good? You can do that too. It doesn't take much. And, you know, if you've never caulked before, you'll get the hang of it. And you can wipe some stuff off. And if you do a bad job in one little line, you can, you can wipe some of it 
deeper off and then try it again. The more you do, the better you'll get. That's just how it is. Now that you know how to do your kitchen sink, guess what other sink I want you to do now? Don't forget, your bathroom sinks probably need to be done too. And guess what? I think I might know somebody who can do that for you. That's all I got for now, but I'll be back with more videos.